What's happening guys? I hope everybody had a great weekend. It is another Sunday scan this time for October 4th and the week ahead. Uh, and uh, I don't anticipate this being 49 minutes. I know that there's a big game tonight. Maybe some of you guys don't care, but I do. It's Brady versus the Patriots, Buccaneers versus the Patriots. It's going to be an awesome game. Um, you know, I thought about going to it, but it's one of those things where you just get back at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and it's not really... It, if it was the Super Bowl or playoff game, I'd consider it, but, uh, you know, my couch is a, a pretty comfortable spot. So uh, I'm not going to it, although a lot of my friends are, uh, but I just don't want to start the week off with a, a 4 a.m., 5 a.m., go to bed, try to wake up and, and trade the market. So... Um, but my, my goal is to make this as short as possible so you guys can get back to the, uh, uh, beers and nachos and whatever, whatever it may be that you might, uh, have to watch the game. Uh, but, uh, last week was probably the most FOMO I felt in a very long time. And, you know, we had AMC, GME, Clove, Riot, uh, MRNA, uh, most recently, maybe like two months ago or so. And, you know, the, the A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, the magnitude, you know, I've used the word magnitude of, uh, of a setup. And, you know, I just did not want to get off my desk. I, I got up early. I got prepared. You know, I'm staring. I'm waiting. I canceled the haircut. Canceled this. Canceled that. You know, just because I knew the opportunity was going to be so massive. And... So there was some great opportunities, and earlier in the week, I think it was Tuesday or so, you know, I had probably one of the largest uh, trades that I've made size-wise, and it was definitely one of the one of the better trades that I've ever made when it flushed out to the lows. But you know, I only took took off like 20, 25 percent, and then I kind of minimized it as it as it came back up, and I you know took the position off. Um, still a nice trade. But it wasn't uh, as as uh, you know as as huge or as as massive as I wanted. However, uh, the next day, uh, day or day after, we're we're going towards five. You know, everybody's excited. Four fifties, four sixties, four seventies, and I told everybody, make sure you're recording. Make sure you're recording this action. And from about four thirty to four fifty on CEI, finally started to speed up and. I mentioned in the room, feels like the emotions are starting to kick in. We're finally starting to speed up relative to prior price action, which is what puts my antenna on. And so then it got to that point and it just started to kind of, you, you could see the, the transition happening in, in the tape. And I, like I said, I felt like it's really close. It was really, really, really close. And then 20 seconds later, we literally go into a circuit hold down, opens back up still above four, which gave it an amazing opportunity to size even more. And circuit halted down again, went back under three. And uh, it was one of the most incredible trade opportunities that we've had uh, in quite some time. So it was nice to get a piece of that. It was nice to get a good portion of that. Um, but, you know, the way that I felt this week, just like I could not move from my desk. And I, I don't like being glued to my monitors. But, uh, you know, it was worth it, whatever. Uh, it, was a, it was a good trade opportunity. But... You know, the, I think the point that I'm making here is if that's you on every single day, every single trade, and it used to be me, it used to be me, where I'd always fear missing out on some type of setup. And now I feel like it's it's very, uh, it's only common when we have these types of setups, AMC, Clove, CEI, things like that. But if that's you every single day, uh, it's going to be a very tiresome career path that you <laughs> that you choose. So you got to figure out a way to disconnect. I've had to. It's still probably my biggest. Um, it, it's probably the most difficult for me to to do so, but I've done a good job at it this year. Um, but either way, uh, amazing, uh, amazing setup there. Amazing unwind. Uh, happy to see that uh, a lot of people made money on the long side. But as with anything. Most of them are going to still hold it all the way back down and, you know, we'll see what happens. But that said, um, you know, it leads me in and I'm only going to spend like maybe 60 seconds on this, uh, maybe a little bit more, but uh, that us first them approach and, and that reminder to just be careful what you read online. And I, I mentioned it this week and I appreciate everybody that watches these videos. I appreciate that every, you know, everybody that uh, responds 
uh, in a in a normal manner. You know, somebody that's willing to learn, uh, willing to have a constructive uh, conversation. Um, the part that you know caused me to to tweet out basically fifteen tweets of of this us first them kind of mentality is creating this false narrative, creating this this fictional um, kind of uh, fake uh, storyline, not only using that to, to push the stock, but uh, using it to end up getting reckless and, and bringing more and more and more people into this trade who eventually are going to lose their shirt. Sure, a lot of people made a lot of money on the, on the upside, but there's there's a point where things get reckless and we're beyond that point. And yet promoters, pumpers are still being extremely reckless. So that's the point of all of that is because I wasn't fighting the trade. I don't take shorts overnight. And for me, this was an A plus opportunity each and every single day this week. For me, this was about being patient. This was about letting the trade exhaust everybody that was finding the top. Yeah, there was a lot of shorts in it, no doubt. But as somebody that's been doing this for a very long time, as somebody that's eaten it a lot of times, it's the most important thing not to assume that it has to do anything. Because that's what happened with AMC, and I was fighting it every single day. That's what happens back many years ago when I'm fighting low float type stocks, right? So let everybody else come in there and exhaust. And there was a couple times, number one, if you read scans last week, I was looking for 350 to four parabolic type of move. Um, not short biased until we had that overextension. Uh, I think that it was the shiny object of the uh, week. And because of that, myself included, ended up missing MRNA, NVAX, BNTX, and a bunch of other incredible trades. So. There's always an opportunity cost to having blinders go on. And that was my opportunity cost because I know a lot of great traders made some great trades on MRNA. And you know what? There was, there was no headache on that thing. That thing just went straight down. Uh, followed a downtrend, no, no random candles, no nothing. So uh, I always like to review what I missed, what I could have done better. Um, but you know, no regrets. CEI was, was some, some amazing opportunities and, uh, was fortunate to be part of, uh, two of those biggest moves, um, and, you know, behave the, the rest of the time. So, uh, I think beyond that, I think it's important to understand the, uh, correlation between DATS, D-A-T-S and CEI. If you guys understood, um, Sometimes we use Bitcoin or Riot to uh, be this uh, index almost for trading CAN and BTBT and all these other names in the, in the sector. Or maybe you use um, TQQ and you look for uh, different, um, different tech stocks that are, that are either having relative weakness or relative strength. And uh, in this case, you know, you, you look for correlations. You look for, for what can you use as a guide to make a good trade. If you look at DATS and if you look at CEI, compare the last 10 days of trading, you will see exactly what I mean. And I will try to put some of those images up here so you can see. Uh, but you can see where you can use CEI to your advantage to anticipate the trade in DATS. And DATS ended up being an incredible trade also something that is uh, being heavily promoted. So uh, be cautious with all of that. Trading long-term is not us versus them. Trading long-term is about a process. You can get rich here near term, no doubt, no doubt. But there's something about uh, making money real fast and keeping it long-term. There's something about making money real fast and then that's it, right? You start living this ridiculous lifestyle and then you realize that, you know, you. You got lucky. You know, you, you just bought some trash that went up and you learned very reckless trade uh, decisions. And over time, it will catch up. That's fine. I don't care if people don't want to believe me. The ones that do will understand. The ones that uh, did, you know, benefited. 
AMC, GME, all these ty types of, of names. You only need to get rich once. Um, then, then you need to keep it and you need a process. You need a process to understand and be able to do this by yourself long term. Um, so, think about what you want to get out of this. You know, if you've come into some decent coin by, by trading some of these moves and, and uh, been able to benefit by some of this upside, think about, you know, how you got there. Think about uh, what you're best at and, and start fine-tuning uh, your trade process and, most importantly, your risk management. Risk management is what's going to keep you here long term. It's not about the wins. Trust me. Wins are not hard to find. It's all about keeping your money. Risk management is everything. The last thing, before I forget, and I'm going to go into scan. Tomorrow at noon, uh, Alex, be the story. Uh, Alex Bustos, you've seen him interview me a couple times. He's interviewed Cody. He's interviewed a bunch of great traders. Um, I like his interview style, the way that he uh, asks questions. He's asking what I think the normal average listener would ask. Uh, and if you don't give a good enough answer, he's going to ask for more. And I think that that's great because he starts to dig and dig and dig and dig on the types of questions that most people would ask. So, uh, he wanted to do kind of an in-person, and so I invited him over a couple weeks ago, Cody, same deal, and we did kind of an off-the-cuff, uh, not really prepared, just general conversation uh, on the dock about trading and, and uh, you know, things that, uh, what it takes and, and different words that were, um, that he had come up with that he wanted to kind of talk about. And I thought that it came out really, really well. I was able to watch it this weekend. I think that you guys are going to love it. Uh, so I will include a uh, link and uh, everything in the newsletter. Uh, and we're going to send it out tomorrow around noon, 1230 or so. So look forward to that. And let's get right into scan. All right, guys. Uh, once again, this is the second part of scan. I am not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations. And this is for educational and informational purposes only. If you're not okay with that, shut the video off. If you're okay with that and you're interested in learning a little bit more about how I prepare for the week ahead, by all means, enjoy, and I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, CEI is going to be a, a watch. It's been a, an active trader. It's been a fantastic trader. Uh, the liquidity is, is you know, something only, you know, active traders can dream of. Uh, you could literally trade any size that you were comfortable with and you know get in and out without even moving the the, the market a, a few cents so uh one of the, the biggest things uh and i can post some of that stuff i did uh on, on twitter but um raid range anticipation understanding potential range was probably the most important piece of this trade and so in a situation like this i always look left and we got a lot of great information each day from that, being able to kind of use the prior day's action into the next day to take a potential position. For example, this particular day, the goal was a 430 push for the potential of a fade towards 350s. And I felt like it would probably consolidate. The reason why you can't just bet on these things going to zero is because of the volume. There is a huge market. There is a huge amount of shares being traded and that is definitely something that makes it difficult for the trade as well because when you have a huge position you want to hang out for this type of action right but if you did that this day you ended up probably breaking even on the trade right there was a huge trade opportunity off the open flushed from 320s down to 280s and literally any size you wanted to trade ended up coming back up. So then the next time that happens, it's, is this the same thing again? Or can I size in? Can I scale in? Can I, is, is this the finally the time? And so what you can do is you look left uh, and you can see number one, the prior support in this range held these prior days. And then you throw in another one and you saw that, you know, pretty much held to a T on Friday. So Always looking at those prior levels will keep you 
with the emotions in check. You can see this prior level of support starts to become the peak and VWAP starts to also give it a little bit of trouble. So uh, completely unwound, fantastic trade, fantastic opportunity. It's not always gonna be that great, but hey, when these things come, the, the goal is always not to pre-exhaust on the front side. There was a lot of huge transitions that happened. And so what I mean by that is that huge stuff move, that huge candle, right? But what happens after is all that matters on a trade like this. And each time that I mentioned that, I also mentioned we have yet to be proven of any failed follow through momentum. All it's done is hold trend. All it's done is hold support. And if you drew lines each time, each day, when you woke up and looked at the prior levels of support, you would see that they were holding a common theme. Every prior low was held to a T within a couple cents. So uh, with a trade like this, I think it's very easy to uh, get a little, um, you know, like almost like you're forcing the trade. So I would be less cautious about, all right, I'm waking up Monday morning. I got to nail this stock. No, wait for the trade setup. Wait for the edge to come to you because you know what? Everybody's doing what you wanted to do. Everybody's doing that trade, which is why it did what it did, which is why it's hanging out longer than it should be, right? Uh, so when everybody is doing the same thing, it's gonna hang out longer. If you guys remember going back to BTBT, we knew the end game. We knew how BTBT was going to end. Did it come on your timetable? Absolutely not. No, it didn't. But we knew that there was gonna be a huge trade here. But it did just enough for one day, two day, three day, four day to kind of keep you on the edge of your seat and make sure that you weren't taking a huge size and, you know, winning. You know, it did just enough to take your huge short that you had high conviction and whittle it down to a small amount until you were out. And that's what makes the market. And that's what created that market. That's what created CEI's market. Uh, so keep that in mind. Same deal happens with all these types of trades. And it's it's really after the initial move is when the big moves come. Uh, so keep that in mind. And obviously CEI, they will continue to try to keep it trading until they finally let it break under the 280s. And, you know, obviously at that point, you'll probably start to see this slow, steady unwind process. It's very similar to BBIG. And we've all talked about uh, that one many times in the past as well. Um, BBIG. Oops. No, oh, BBIG. I had it. There we go. Uh, same deal. Same kind of topping situation. They do just enough. Everybody was already understood that it was going to fade. Everybody already knew where the end game was in this area. And that's why it went here. So it was our job. It was your job. It was my job not to step in front and try to be a hero and try to find the top. Same deal CEI. Uh, so higher the better. Obviously, we're going to have lots of pump over the weekend and uh, hopefully it gaps up. There was rumor, potential options. Options are not necessarily uh, bullish. It allows anybody that's you know outsized on the short side to potentially hedge. So be cautious having the, the wrong understanding of what options really mean. Uh, MRNA was a home run that I never even looked at. Uh, very nice on wine. A lot of people I saw trading it. A lot of people had some really good trades on it. Um, nice fail. I think, it, the, forget the ticker, AVIR maybe. Uh, yeah. AVIR had, had uh, you know, stole some attention that, that morning and then all of a sudden, uh, NVAX, um, BNTX, and uh, MRNA all came in. So I do think that there's going to be a nice trade here again. Uh, ideally, we get some type of gap up. I'm prepared for two trades. One gap up towards 350s, potential fade off. Otherwise, gap down, flush, and use Friday's level as sort of a, a potential you know, risk spot. So... If it were to open 330s and it flushed out towards 3, 3, you know, 27, 328, something like that, I'd probably start to think about taking the trade versus 325 level. 
And then if it starts to firm up, scale in and risk towards the, the low of days. So those are the two trades that I would be prepared for on that. BMRA was a nice one. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but you just kind of had to understand where the channel was and figured out the channel pretty quick. Uh, my goal, I got a long pre-market in the 570s and then it just it just took off. Uh, I was pretty much the last entry. I, tr I tried to buy 580, 581, 585, but it just got paper thin. It took off. So this reminded me a lot of CRVS. So I want to be focused on this in the coming week ahead. Um, whether or not it turns into a, a, a big trade and goes 7-8, we'll, we'll find out. Right now, I want to assume that it doesn't. I do actually still have a position on it long. Um, had a really nice trade on it, really nice read. Uh, and this was a, a great example of cool it, <laughs> wait for your entry. Uh, you know, I think that it, it squeezed out a ton of shorts, uh, both right over here and on this candle right here. It had a huge... Uh, Huge, huge order. Uh, blew out shorts and then just slammed right down, which kind of made me rethink. Okay, maybe this this flush towards 580s idea maybe is not a, a good good trade plan. So it was it pretty much reaffirmed: do not scale into the trade until you start to see the base firm up, or if you see those 630s start to base. So we had a nice uh, base formed, a nice uh, nice retest of the of the highs later on. Uh, but I think uh, one of the most important parts here is um, that, you know, we need to see confirmation. We need to see 580 stay as base. We need to see 630s start to confirm, uh, you know, that it's going to have that follow through momentum to the upside. So I just updated DAS and I don't have pre-market on here, which I just noticed. That's a lot better. I do not like uh, having only intraday view up on my chart. I like to have the whole... The whole thing um so anyway uh that's the plan with that one uh i think that there's a lot of shorts that came in based off the filings but i think that they missed uh, a couple words in the filings they don't technically need money they might raise some so i think that there was a little bit of pressure uh that they might have sold some shares to get a little bit of money but they're not in a in a huge desire because they've got uh enough money until you know next summer um so we'll see what happens with that but uh I do. I would like to participate in a larger capacity if the trade starts to set up like we had uh, on this CRVS trade, which for whatever reason, DAS does not want to behave today. There we go. Um, so uh, we had like that first day right here and then the dip the next day. If you guys remember, uh, the thought process was if 580 started to base, I was interested for that breakout. Uh, and then it ended up going nuts to, I think, 10. Yeah, 950s or so. I think it was 10 pre-market one day, but or close to it. But either way, when I see this BM, uh, BMRA, my, my thought process goes straight to CRBS, like I've seen it before. Um, PALT. Uh, PALT was a, uh, a fantastic uh, breakout. Totally, totally fumbled this one. I was long this day right here, uh, and I was in under, uh, was it under four. Yeah, it was under four, uh, like three fifties, three seventies. Then it immediately popped a buck after hours, and I actually had a, a decent size. So I looked at the PNL and I was like, "Hey, probably a Twitter pump. I'll I'll just lock it in for a buck per share." Big mistake. So uh, next day it actually held exceptionally well. It was actually two days later. And it turned into almost like a liquidity trap type situation. Uh, so I actually held it over, very small. Uh, and then it worked. I made it to 888. And then obviously it went to, you know, 15 or whatever. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you're always going to do that. But it's been a, a fantastic trader. You can see that it's uh, basically squeezing out shorts, settling down, squeezing out shorts, settling down. So that, to me, those types of wicks mean cool it. Don't try to find the top on the front side. Let it do its thing and then join on the back side and, and as you saw there was plenty of that action uh plenty of that opportunity throughout the day on friday i had a nice little fader um off open and the goal was i left early but the goal was to basically reshort any pops into the close and you know once again looking left i mean this is not rocket science 
uh, use the left levels as your guide and then when things start to break down you know where is the key levels that it could potentially break down under and so you've got this kind of base forming at 1060s and then pretty much the floodgates at 1045 so um, in a perfect world I'd like to see it pop towards 1050s and then failed follow through momentum uh, DATS again uh, like I mentioned this thing is literally trading in tandem with CEI and so there's an edge there there's an edge when you are patient and you wait and you see CEI completely get smoked there is an edge on this trade and you know whether or not it'll be there this week that's that's what the market is we'll find out <clears throat> but the way in which I use CEI was anytime we had a big breakout on CEI, I was hands off on DATS. Anytime it got heavy and it started to unwind or flush, I was all over DATS. It was a much easier trade, less crowded, and um, it even gave really good cover spots. So when CEI started to rally a little bit, you had five minutes or so to you know cover up on DATS. And then you see it kind of pop back up. You see you know social... Uh, you know, kind of defend it and, and get excited about it again. Um, but either way, watch both of these. Uh, they they do trade in tandem. And again, like I said, I'll put up a chart that you can kind of see, um, you know, how just just how well they trade together. Uh, JSPR. This one was a fantastic trade, uh, and then it was a not so fantastic trade. So I had I was buying. 12s it went to like 1550s or so uh, i had locked in a decent chunk uh and then i was going to let it work let it work and then it just kind of started to come uh come apart so my average is in like the 12s but i had locked them in in the 15 so you know i've got a, a little wiggle room but then it took a, a, a dump down and so had a nice uh, breakout day this day over here back up to 12 so the trade actually was not you know horrible uh, but then we've got a seven point something percent stake um, by Amgen, um, 7.4 percent that came out on Friday. So uh, there is a very uh, high chance that this gaps up, maybe 10, 11, 12, something like that, 4 a.m. Uh, we'll see. But it's definitely, uh, I mean, it's almost a 10 percent, you know, seven and a half percent. I'm not, I'm averaging up, but it's a significant stake. Uh, in in this uh, company that just went public, so uh, via SPAC. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, let's see, go go. Uh, this one's been a great one, and this one has been uh, T five thirties had some great upgrades and notes on this thing uh, from the first day. It was basically this uh, day in the fourteen range, and uh, some high uh, high point targets. I think William Blair went to thirty. Don't quote me on that. I I tweeted it. I forget what it was, um, but let's keep on watching dips and you can see that there's a buyer on the tape each dip gets soaked up deep uh, the dip gets soaked up continues on you can see it uh, right here right here right here um, so these types you know it's kind of like uh, the I'm trying to think of the um, name of the trade uh, DVAX DVAX had a, a huge opportunity huge trade and, you know, a lot of people try to find the top, try to find the top, try to find the top, and then you end up missing it. So I want to keep this on radar. Even if I don't join the trend long, and I do think that I could potentially break out towards 2022 or something like that. But even if I don't take the long trade, I want to watch for failed follow through momentum. Because when it has range like this, there could be potential opportunities setting up. And you can see that with this DVAX chart. So it's kind of setting up in a similar fashion. So we'll see. Uh, I'm not suggesting that it's just going to dump right back, but I would like to see it go 2022. 20, People forget about it. It does, you know, one of those dunk days back to 18, and I'd like to take advantage of that. Uh, a couple others, uh, VIST we talked about last week. So far, so good. Uh, nothing that I am uh, trading aggressively. I do have a position long, but, you know, just kind of letting it work. Uh, MXC, no position, but you can see that, you know, with the sector, it's starting to get soaked up. It's a thin name. Could be one of those that goes into circuits at some point. RCAT, um, this this key for me is 380s. So it looked good the last couple days, and then you know it just kind of fades off. So you know there's nothing to be excited about at all. 
until you see 380s as a base. So if you get another PR or if you start to see it uh, really firm up over 380s, <clears throat> for me, that would be uh, of interest. And the, the main reason there is we've got this big volume day and it's starting to hold trend. But so far it's failing, it's failing. I actually like that because it gets out all the longs. However, that does not mean it's bullish. What means it's bullish is if it opens and it holds over 380s on a PR or something like that. And if that's the case, then that means I want to scale, scale, scale if the trend holds because uh, I know that this has kind of been the cleanup move. Um, other than that, last couple, BBIG, it's been a, a nice little trader. Um, I've got a, a little bit of a thesis that I shared in the room, and I will uh, share that in more detail. Um, but uh, I've been aiming at the 580 to 6 range. Uh, to accumulate and you know, we had a big move on Thursday. So I ended up locking in uh, Quite a bit of it just because I was not expecting the move to happen that soon uh, But I am interested in any good flushes over the next uh, week and for a potential run-up into October 14th or 15th uh, last but not least dogs somebody let the dogs out apparently uh, I've been there for about a week and I've added each day. So we'll see if uh, this continues to go on. I like the fact that it's kind of had a buyer on the tape for quite some time. I like the fact that uh, each day that it seems like somebody's accumulating. So I've kind of been accumulating alongside them. Uh, and if it continues to uh, you know, get going, it's a small enough market cap where it could go uh, nuts. But I don't want to get too top heavy. If I do add, 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 and it starts to kind of fade off, then I need to probably de-risk a position a little bit. So that is about it. That's what I'm prepared for. Uh, I do think we're going to have another busy week. I do not plan on uh, not leaving my desk 24-7. Uh, not really 24-7, but you know what I mean. I, was, uh, I did have a lot of FOMO not to miss that CEI opportunity. Um, I'm glad that we had it. And... Um, you know, hopefully we continue to have those types of setups. Um, somebody asked me on the comment section last week if it, you know, are you just saying that these weeks are like, <laughs> they keep on getting better and better and better. But I mean, there there is opportunity every single week. And it's, you know, CEI, I do feel like uh, I could have made a lot more. Um, but it's hard to size and have heavy conviction with the amount of, you know, whipsaw back and forth. Something like AMC, Clove, Riot, <clears throat> MRNA, there's less uh, social interaction, less social, um, uh, I don't know what the word is for it, exposure, or, you know, it's less things to worry about. And uh, so you kind of have to behave uh, on, on these particular trades more so than if you're on the right side of the trade and just let it go. Um, but good week last week, good way to end the month. Good way to start the month, um, and uh, hopefully it continues. Last but not least, William Simmons, you uh, won the shirt for this week, uh, or a week to IU, whatever one you want, just a uh, week, a month to IU, whatever one you want, just email me, webmaster at Investors Underground, and we'll do the other one uh, next week. All right, guys, have a great weekend, and if you're watching the football game, enjoy it. And don't forget, Tomorrow, noon, uh, Be The Story interview is out with me and Cody, and it's a lot of fun.